show is brought to you by preparewithtammy.com. One of the best ways to build independence and confidence is being prepared. Here at my home, 1890 Homestead, we focus on self-sufficiency like gardening, water filtration, and storable food. For more information and to order the supplies you need, go to preparewithtammy.com. We are here to help people feel good so they can do what they love for longer. So let's get started with today's Health Watch. Today we're talking about GMOs. Now, I think everybody has heard of GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Over the you know last decade or so, two decades probably, they've become more and more uh, prevalent seeing in the grocery store. They have labels now to identify them. Of course, that's been for years now. But um, what are GMOs? Well, I've been doing some studying on GMOs so I could totally... Uh, grasp the concept of their impact on our food supply. So let's take a look at this article from the FDA, actually. Uh, it's straight off their, their website. This is the science and history of GMOs and other food modification processes. Um, I just love these government agencies, how they always have to kind of, <laughs> you know, they're always telling you why you should accept something. They're always telling you why you should, um, you know, just accept it blindly without, without any kind of questioning. So this article starts off, you know, telling you how for thousands of years, human humans have been using traditional modification methods like selective breeding and crossbreeding to breed plants and animals with more desirable traits, right? So this is totally normal, right? <laughs> this is what they're, they're doing. This is, this is a form of gaslighting, really. I mean, it really is to just kind of assume like, Hey, this is, this is totally normal, right? Right? This is what we do. Well, not really. I mean, this is completely different um, than the natural process of, of modif modifying food. Um, this is this is something that's done in the lab, right? So they they line it out pretty good here and they tell you exactly what they do. So how are GMOs GMOs made? So they identify a genetic information or a gene that gives an organism organism, plant, animal, or microorganism, a desired trait. Next, they copy that information from the organism that has that trait. And then the next step is they insert that new information into the DNA of another organism. Okay. And then they grow a new organism. So it's kind of like this four-step process, right? Ge genetically modified organism has become the common term consumers and popular media use to describe foods that have been created through genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is a process is, is this process, this four-step process. So they invite they basically identify a trait that they like, like maybe a, a plant is, is more uh, drought resistant, and they identify that gene and then they copy it and they use it in another organism. So that's what it is. Um, they they often do it, you know, because they say that they don't want to have to use herbicides or or they want to create crops that are in, insect proof, you know, so that they can grow, you know, more abundant and quicker. Um, but does that come at a cost? And something I was listening to over the weekend, I was listening to um, a scientist talk about pharmaceuticals and the pharmaceutical industry. And I thought that this was really profound and simple the way he put it. I, I really liked it. He said that these companies are often not asking the right question when it comes to our health. So a, a pharmaceutical company doesn't ask the question, how do we cure heart disease? They ask the question of how will this medication affect symptomology in people and how can we make money off of it, right? So they're constantly trying to prove a, a hypothesis that will benefit the company because it's a business. They don't ask questions uh, specifically to like, how do we cure heart disease? Because if they did, they'd be coming up with, with solutions that lead to lifestyle and diet and making healthier foods, because we know that this is the way to, you know, eliminate heart disease. We already know that 90%, 90 plus percent of chronic disease and illness, such as heart disease are caused by lifestyle. So they're not asking the right questions. 
and we expect them to come up with solutions but they're not even asking the right question. So that's to keep in mind when we're looking at, at GMOs as well. They're looking at how they can perfect the food supply, how they can um, you know, genetically modify something and then patent it so that they can become the stakeholder of that patent. They're not asking you know, how we make better, cleaner, uh, more sustainable foods. That's not the question. That's not the hypothesis they're trying to answer. They're trying to uh, get a completely different answer. And we should keep that in mind. Um, reading this book called The Disease Delusion. It's by Jeffrey Bland. And he talks a little bit about GMOs here near the end of the book, which I found really interesting. So he talks about how GMOs are very controversial still, especially because one of the world's population derives a lot of its calories from the crops of rice. And rice is heavily uh, genetically modified. Now, right now, they're saying, you know, that the safety, there, there are no safety concerns and everything is fine. But what he's saying is we really don't know the outcome of that yet. And there's one interesting thing that he uh, point he brought up, which I find very interesting, is is the fact of this uh, food related allergies. So if they are splicing, um, you know, genetic and making genetically modified foods, or what I like to call kind of Franken foods, um, how do we know how this is affecting? allergies in in our in our country within um, our population because we've seen a huge spike in allergies particularly with kids and it would make sense if you're splicing something and he uses this example of the brazil nut a gmo potato is one into which the gene of a Brazil nut has been inserted. The same has been done to soybeans. In both cases inserts of the Brazil nut um, gene increases the essential sulfur amino acid level in the plant protein and allergy testing of the GMO potato and the GMO soy confirmed that each is able to trigger trigger Brazil nut allergy. So you're eating a potato, you have no idea that there's it's genetically modified with a uh, gene from the Brazil nut. Could that trigger food insensitivities? And could it trigger full blown allergies? These are things that need to be studied long term, not to mention, um, you know, just the thought of messing with nature in this fashion creeps me out, right? We, we just couldn't possibly understand the complexity of how our, our, our bodies interpret food messages when we eat them. We, it's so complex that we can't just kind of throw that to the wind and be like, oh, it'll be fine. Um, we need to understand it better. Unfortunately, some platforms censor the information in this show. Watch the rest of this episode by going to naturallyinspireddaily.com. Find amazing interviews with people like David Icke, Max Egan, Frontline Doctors, and more at naturallyinspiredpodcast.com. Connect with me directly at tammycuthbertgarcia.com. Support our amazing team, help us defeat censorship and become a subscriber for only $5 a month at livenaturallyinspired.com. Find me on all social media platforms at connectwithtammy.com.